today I got something a little extra exciting. Excitement. Uh, as you may already know, I have been holding on to this for the past 10 days, but I had no motherboard to try it on. Well, this morning I've received the Prime X 399A from Asus. You might think that I'm very, very happy. And indeed I am. But I still have to do its review before I can boot it up. So, for your greatest pleasure and my greatest impatience, let's roll this intro. Prime motherboards are Asus entry level to a certain chipset. And with a $350 tag price, uh, I, one could expect to find a reduced featured board. Well, this is not your conventional motherboard. This is a Threadripper motherboard and this does come with a lot of expectations. To give you an example, the Prime X399A comes in an EATX form factor right there, right on the entry level. Yeah, but nothing will illustrate better my point than taking a closer look to it. So, unboxing. So here is our motherboard. Right underneath it, we have a couple of SATA plugs, a two-way SLI bridge, our M.2 solid state drive vertical mount, an IO shield, the manual, our front panel bridge, our M.2 screw and screw razor, and finally drivers, coupon, and quick start guide that we usually get in those kind of boxes. Nothing groundbreaking so far. I hear you. But take a closer look to this. The first thing who will jump right at you is this massive CPU socket. The TR4 socket boasts an unprecedented 4094 pins. This is about three times the amount of pins we would have on an LGA 1151 and roughly twice the amount we would have on an LGA 2066. Worth noting, if you bend or damage any of them, you are on the market for a brand new motherboard. Let's move on to the memory. We have a quad-channel configuration which can support all the way up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM with a maximum clock of 3.2GHz. Staying with memory, we can mount up to two M.2 solid state drive on this motherboard. One on a vertical mount right here, and a second one right under this heat shield. Interestingly, on the back of the heat shield there is a thermo pad, and this will keep our M.2 solid state drive from thermo throttling too often or too soon. Alright, so even though the X399 chipset support up to a quad video card configuration, uh, we only have room for three on this particular board. But hear this, we can operate a three-way video card configuration on this motherboard and expect an individual transfer rate up to 16 bus speed each. That's when you can really appreciate what the Threadripper processor brings on the table. The fact that it comes with so many PCIe lanes, 64 third generations PCIe lanes in a single processor gives you so much more liberty to run multiple GPUs. The only thing you're gonna have to be careful uh, with is the power. Video cards need a lot of juice and if you are going to run two or in this case three video cards in the same time, that's 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 at least a 1200 or a 1500 watt PSU. Just keep this in mind. So the PCIe lanes which will give us those kind of performances are the two first gray and the last black one. It is worth noting that they have all been metallically reinforced so that they can comfortably carry the ever-growing weight of our video cards. As for the other three PCIe slots, the single slot, the four slot and the 16 slot, they are all capped up to four bus speed. All right, so let's move on to our peripherals. On our IO back panel, we have starting from the left, our BIOS clear button, a total of eight 3.1 generation USB plugs, our one gigabit LAN plug, two second generation 3.1 USB plug, one type A and one type C. Audio wise, we have our five different channels. And finally, an optical audio input. Worth noting, on our board we also have an additional 5 USB connectors which we can connect to our case front panel. Two USB 2s, two 3.1 first generation and finally one 3.1 second generation plug. As far as hard disk goes, we have six SATA plugs which can all transfer data up to 6 gigabit per second individually and two U.2 connectors for your compatible solid state drives. I mean, we could stop the video right here. Um, 
we have just reviewed more features that we could reasonably hope for on a board uh, which costs only $350. But <laughs> there's more. And, and it's probably my favorite part of the video. The enthusiastic part. Enthusiast! The QLED screen. This is one of my favorite tools on any motherboard. It allows me to easily troubleshoot a build which doesn't want to start or is giving weird errors and also monitor the current temperature of my processor. I am not gonna make or I avoid making builds which do not have QLED screens. Also, we have a power switch soldered directly onto the board and that also is such a lifesaver for me when it comes to um, test the, the build right away without having to plug in all the front panel connectors. And I'm sure you already know what I'm gonna talk about next. The Aura Sync Effect. And if you don't know what the Aura Sync Effect is, shame on you. You do have homework, but in a nutshell, the Aura Sync Effect is uh, the fact that, uh, how, what is it? In a nutshell, Aura will sync all your different components RGB so that the entire build has the same kind of lighting effect. On this particular motherboard, we have RGB LEDs hidden under the chipset and a couple of connectors on both extremities of the board, which will allow you to connect Aura compliant bands so that you can add some extra lighting all around the casing, which I usually do. There is much more to speak about and I could still talk about the 3D mount and the fact that you can add uh, a little fan on the M.2 solid state drive to keep it even cooler, uh, the fact that the motherboard is custom water ready. I mean there is a lot more options which could be relevant to our discussion but the point of it is that it is a massive good deal. It's, it is massively a good deal. In general AMD is not very well furbished in terms of uh, compatible motherboard and accessories. But things are changing. There's some kind of paradigm that has been achieved in the market lately. And this motherboard really represents this change. I'm almost tempted to say that uh, manufacturers are spending more resources and more time on engineering Ryzen compliant motherboard than they might be on the Intel side. I was genuinely surprised how rich it was and how the whole architecture of it was rethought. I have absolutely no doubt that the Prime X399A is probably one of the most affordable and well-featured motherboard out there for a Threadripper build. The only thing I would advise you to do is to wait a couple of weeks more because motherboards are just coming out and see what the manufacturers are going to do and how the manufacturers are going to achieve a status quo because this will benefit us as consumers. So give it a couple of weeks, make sure that you choose the components wisely, make sure to stay online to see how the Threadripper reacts because this is a new thing, this is a whole new uh, uh, player in town and make sure that you're spending your money wisely because whatever you're building, it's not gonna be cheap.